All right, so welcome back. And in this video, you see that we have a shape and we do have a central place where everything comes for. So anytime you see something that has a shape like this, your mind should kind of automatically jump over to using a polar array. And that's going to be the, the true command that we're going to use here that's going to save us the most time. Now, I can do this with the rotate command and other things of that nature. But in this case, polar array will work best for us. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so in this video, you're going to see me use the polar array, as I was telling you in the intro. But where's the center at? And that's going to be easy to identify on a polar array because it's just one center and it's going to be here. What we're going to do is we're going to create one of these and particularly I'm going to create this top one mainly because I don't want to have to deal with angles. When you see some kind of polar array typically it's going to have an angle and what I'm referring to is this 30 degrees angle here. I can create this one at a 30 degrees but if I take a closer look I see that this one is at north and south. So I can create one of these and then I don't have to worry about an angle. So that's going to be super important to you. A lot of other things that you're going to see typical is that you have a couple of dimensions here and I'm going to highlight them. Is that I have this 20 and I have the 24 and these mainly these 35s. These are going to be offsets. Now remember that when you're doing an offset, you are typically going to have to do half of it to achieve it. And the ones I'm talking about specifically, it's going to be this 20 degrees. The 30, sorry, not 20 degrees, 20. The 35s that you see here at the top, they are already spaced out the way I want them. The 24, I'm going to have to split that one. And you can see that dimension here is 12. Other things I want to make sure that I do know is that I have my outside diameter here. I have my inside radius here. And I do have a radius locating here. We have some verbiage here that says that I have this at six times. So in six places, I have a diameter on the inside that's representing at 40 on a 220 BC. This BC means bolt circle. Okay. You may see it in other formats called a PCD or some other things, but they all mean the same. It just means that the center of this is going to be located on this dimension. So you may have this dimension or you may not. If, it, if you don't have it, it's going to be covered here. So I just wanted to make sure I put them both in this example so that you can see that you're going to either have the dimension actually depicting it or you're going to have it located in the note. All right. So enough of me talking about it. Let's jump over to AutoCAD and get this started. Okay. So over here in AutoCAD, let's go ahead and do our standard things that we're going to do. I just like to turn the grid off and some of you might like working with it on, but I'll turn it off. I'm going to use the ortho since I'm going to deal with that circle that's going to be directly north and south as I refer it to. Some of the other things I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look and these are going to be my running O snaps. And I think that's going to be everything that I need. I can also see that my dynamic input is turned on. And remember, I may not have said this in a while, but to turn that on, remember, it's going to be the three bars here on the side. And then you're going to go up until you see dynamic input and make sure that there's a check beside it. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started by just creating a line that's going across. And remember, I had those two lines that's sitting at 35 and 35. Well, we can do the simple math on that, and we know that that is 70. So I'm going to start just by creating a line. And I'm going to make sure that it's horizontal. And that's another reason why I have my ortho turned on. And I'll type in 70. Okay, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit or I can zoom the extent. You can double click the middle mouse button or you can click this icon here and then I'm going to scroll backwards on my mouse. Now let's go ahead and create that circle that's around here. It has a radius. So I'm going to use circle center radius. I'll pick this midpoint and it has a radius of 28. You will typically see me once I click that midpoint. I'll kind of preview my circle a little bit. So I'll just pull up and then I'll type in 28. All right. So the next thing I need to do is I need to go ahead and create this thickness that's going off of this. Now, remember that the overall length that we're trying to achieve here is 24. 
So I'm going to go to offset and then I'm going to type in half of that number because I got to apply that to both sides. So therefore it's going to be 24 is my overall length. 12 should be half of 24. And then I'm just going to offset this line here and here. Now if you want to do a faster way of doing this and in this case this is not really the ideal example if it's just two lines. But if I select this line to offset and then if I use the word or click on multiple now I can click here at the bottom and click at the top and then hit escape. All that's going to do is allow me not to have to go back and click the center again. So the next time I use the offset on one of these little fingers at the top, I'll show you the other way. Let's go ahead and draw a line and finish connecting these. So a line on both sides. All right. So now I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to create my next step here. I have a circle that's going around here and remember that big circle is called a bolt circle, BC. Let's go ahead and create that and that was a diameter circle. So circle, center diameter. Let's go ahead and click this midpoint. Always kind of pull your circle out just to get a little preview and then I'll type in 220. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start a circle here that has a diameter of 40. So once again, I'm going to use circle center diameter. You see diameter was the last one I used and it's this icon here at the top. So I'll go ahead and select just that icon and that's going to automatically put me in the circle center diameter. I'll go ahead and select this quadrant. Kind of preview my circle a little bit just by pulling my mouse a little bit. And then I'll type in 40. Now it has a circle with a radius of 30 going around it. Now here's a little shortcut for you in AutoCAD. So instead of going up there and changing my icon, I can just type in C enter. And when I go to the circle command, by default, it's set to a radius. So I'll go to this center or that quadrant, kind of preview my circle a little bit, and then I'll just type in 30. All right. Now we're ready to start creating a little bit more. We do have another circle that's wrapped around here and it has a, a radius of 60. So I can do the exact same thing I did again. So C enter, select this midpoint, kind of pull your circle out a little bit just to get a preview of it. And now I'll type in 60. All right, so we have our inside done. We have this, now we just need a little line to go and connect between here and here. So I'm going to draw a line and I'm going to purposely start it from here. If I start it from here, I'm going to have to come back and do an extend command with it. So therefore, I'm going to go from this quadrant straight directly up to this quadrant. Let's go ahead and hit escape. Now we're going to use the offset command. And remember that this has a thickness of 20. So I'm going to use half of that, which is 10. And instead of using the multiple option like I did in the first one, I'm going to show you the benefit of using multiple, especially if you have more than one line. But I'm going to go to offset here and I'll click to this side. And then I have to come back and click on this line again and then come to this side. And then go ahead and hit escape. So the multiple option speeds that up tremendously. All right, let's go ahead and do our last little bit of work here, which is trimming. We do not need this circle anymore since we do have our center located. And I'm just going to scroll out just a little bit more and I'm going to do all the trimming that I need. So I'll go to trim. And the first thing I'm going to do is start with these two outside circles. And then I'll start with these two lines. All right, I do see that these two parts are gone. So I'm going to go ahead and trim those off. And that's all I'm going to do on this one. I could go ahead and trim this out, but I'm going to have to do that regardless anyway. So I'm going to leave that alone for now. Next thing I'm going to do is that I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these two inner lines here. Let's go ahead and get rid of these two arcs. That's part of my circle. All right. So the only thing I have left now is this line and this line, which should be perfect. All right. So let's go ahead and escape out of that command. Select these two lines. And I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard or you can hit the erase function. So I have them pre-selected. If I hit delete, they'll go away. If I hit erase they'll automatically go away because they're already pre-selected. All right, I'm just going to scroll out a little bit and now let's go ahead and do the polar array. So underneath the drop down, I'll select polar array. It's going to ask me what objects I want to array. I'm just going to use a window 
and I'm using the green one. So remember the green window is from right to left and anything that it crosses and touches will be selected and that's enclosed. So once I select those, enter, it's asking me where's the center of revolution? Where's everything coming from? It's coming from this center here. So remember, all you have to do is touch one of these circles. Once you get the plus, then you can go select it. By default, AutoCAD assumes that you want to create six. And in this case, that is the correct number. All right. So we got everything else that we don't need to deal with on this one. And then do I want the associativity turned on or off? In this case, I'm going to leave it turned on and then I'll show you how to handle it. But you can leave this unselected and that would speed you up a little bit. So I'll leave this selected just in case you made that mistake. Close the array and you're going to see that once I select one of these, all of them will light up. You know, one thing I'm curious to test here is let's go ahead and trim these out and see if it's going to respect these two that are here. So let's go and take a look at the trim and then we're going to just start trimming around. And so that's quite easy and quite simple to do. If you want it to, you can see that these are all kind of separate from my part on the inside. And that's going to be strictly a your option on which way you like it to do it. Anytime you're going to create a drawing for this, no one will be able to tell you that. But if you wanted to separate these and you didn't like this doing this, you can always, let's go ahead and escape out of that command and use the explode command. Select these objects and hit enter and now they'll be separated. So that choice is going to be up to you. It doesn't matter to me. All right. So I hope you enjoyed this video and learned a little bit more about the polar array and especially doing some offsets. And thank you for watching this. And if you don't mind, please hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoy the content. Thank you for watching this.